All right. Well, I appreciate everybody who made it here today. Um, I'll be moving through this topic fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, we'll leave a little time for question and answer. So, uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. Uh, I'm Chris Gibbons, president of American Green Consulting, the premier COC certification consulting and support organization in North America. Uh, to my knowledge, we support more certificate holders than any firm on the continent, from sole proprietors in the heartland to some of the largest wood and paper companies coast to coast. This is the first webinar in what we intend to be a regular series addressing many different certification related topics. Uh, we're choosing to start off with FSC and their new core labor requirements because it is a topic of significant concern to many certified companies. The goal for today uh, is to provide you all with a framework from which you may tackle core labor updates on your own uh, and briefly introduce you to a number of American Green uh, or AGC services that can support you should you choose to go that route. Uh, with me and uh, making this whole thing run smoothly is Jess Gillen, our administrative services manager. Uh, day in and day out, she keeps the good ship AGC moving forward and she'll be doing the same for this webinar. There will be a uh, question and answer at the end. So if you do have questions, please type them in the Q&A uh, section on your screen. Uh, should be chat or uh, raise hand Q&A along the bottom of your screen. So use the Q&A uh, section for any questions. Uh, do not put them in chat. Uh, though if you do have technical issues or need to get a hold of Jess for anything, of course, you're welcome to message her through the chat feature. But uh, I'll not be watching that myself. One thing you can add in the chat, just as a curiosity, we had set up a poll at the beginning, uh, but it uh, seems to be giving us some technical difficulties. So I'm just curious uh, how many folks are actually certificate holders uh, and how many, uh, if any of you have gone through uh, an audit this year and have actually uh, had to deal with core labor. So uh, if you want to add that in the chat, we'd just love to see that. And we'll also be able to help us direct a little bit uh, our future offerings to make sure that we are uh, writing webinars for the people who are actually listening. First, let's talk about what we're actually discussing, uh, core labor. While the protection of workers' rights has always been part of FSC's principles and criteria and mandatory for forest management certificate holders, adding these to the FSC chain of custody standard is new. Section 7 of the 40-004 standard outlines the general requirements of what core labor needs to be. Uh, these are based on the ILO core conventions, but doesn't go into a lot of detail about how to meet those requirements. Now, the ILO, or International Labor Organization Conventions, uh, are something each certified company agrees to abide by or respect, depending on whether your country is a signatory to those conventions. Uh, when signing your trademark license, uh, also commonly referred to as a TLA, uh, with FSC. At some point over the past two years, every certificate holder has undoubtedly signed a new trademark license agreement. Uh, and this uh, updated language was part of that. So uh, since the United States is not a signatory to the ILO core conventions, US-based companies are agreeing to respect the conventions, uh, which is a legal but important distinction uh, and actually was something that was uh, argued about quite a bit over time. So the core tenants of core labor are this. No child labor, no slavery, no discrimination, and employees have the right to collective bargaining. Now, none of these issues obviously offend the sensibilities of a typical American. Uh, on the contrary, we often espouse these, uh, many of these, if not all, as American ideals. Uh, of course, as with everything FSC, the devil uh, may be in the details. Now, 
I'm not going to go through a list of exhaustive concerns uh, about what has been raised over core labor over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, we, because quite frankly, we'd be here all day. Uh, I would like to encourage each of you to use the Q&A section to put in specific scenarios that concern you. Uh, and uh, if we've seen them, uh, and we've seen a number this year, uh, I'll tell you how we addressed it. And hopefully that'll be helpful to you. What I will say uh, is that in the lead up to the launch, there were some terror stories circulating uh, about what might happen when FSC started auditing against this clause. Now that a good number of American Green clients have been through these audits, uh, we can tell you that in the US, audits have ranged from no big deal uh, to ha having a couple of uncomfortable interactions with an auditor. Uh, it really seems to be on a case by case basis right now. However, having seen even the uncomfortable interactions, uh, we're confident they can be addressed going forward. Uh, overall, the biggest fears that we've had uh, around core labor do not seem to have materialized at this point. Uh, we at American Green are routinely in contact with the technical teams at many of the certification bodies. Uh, so even when uh, a negative interaction occurs on an individual audit basis, uh, we're able to address this at, at a systemic level rather than you know, an individual auditor level, what I like to call auditor whack-a-mole. Uh, you know, if you're not working as an American Green client, your takeaway here should be as if you are acting as your own audit advocate, uh, don't be afraid to go up the chain, uh, especially with something new like this. The, you know, the auditor is not the final word. When it comes to the actual audit, uh, there's two pieces of advice. And these are two pieces of advice that I've been giving for all of the decade plus uh, that I've been doing consulting. And I would have liked to have been doing it for the close to 15 years, uh, you know, of total time, even when I was auditing. Uh, but, uh, but it's especially true now. Uh, and the first is, there's no need to share your sentiments with the auditor on, this, on these uh, requirements, especially if you're not a fan or if you disagree with the auditor or with the requirements. Uh, you're not gonna convince them, they're not gonna convince you. Uh, so why are you creating hassle for yourself and antagonizing someone that you're actually paying to be there? Uh, if that's you know, one takeaway you have from this, uh, uh, webinar, I think that would be, you know, the big one. Uh, two, and this is very true for every uh, new addition to a standard, and it doesn't matter if it's SFI, PFC, FSC, today we're talking about, you know, FSC. Uh, don't let the auditor do anything you don't want them to do. If you're not comfortable with a line of questioning, shut it down. If you're not comfortable with them wanting to interview a particular person, don't let them. Uh, the fact is, is we're all doing this for the first time, including the auditor. Uh, and there are going to be missteps. And, uh, you know, for example, we've had an auditor who just wanted to talk to a random person on the floor about, uh, you know, their opinion on unionization. Say no. You know, you're providing folks for them to talk to uh, that are going to cover every aspect. So, you know, they, they don't need to stop the... Uh, you know, the, the forklift operator and have a conversation. Now, uh, actually in this example, our client didn't say no at the time and uh, this doesn't surprise me, you know, conflict is scary. Uh, you're just never sure, uh, I know that. Uh, you know, just remember the politeness, grace and confidence go a long way to diffusing potentially antagonistic situations. And regardless, uh, you know, if something irks you after the audit, you know, uh, get a hold of your certification body or if you're a client of ours, call us. You know, in this particular case, we went back to the CB afterwards and said, hey, well, you know, we weren't comfortable with how this happened. And the certification body said, you know what, really sorry. 
that wasn't our policy. Uh, that wasn't auditor guidance to go that route. And, uh, you know, it won't happen again. Next two audits with that same auditor, we had no issues. So, uh, you know, our, our American Green documentation utilizes a responsible persons table. Uh, this helps guide auditors to interviewees. Uh, obviously, in this case, that didn't work. You know, nothing's perfect, but uh, that's something else that I, you know, recommend is, is if you have the people listed uh, for who's responsible in any given situation, the auditor is generally going to default to talking to those folks. Uh, but, uh, you know, long and short, just feel free to say no. And the reason I say this uh, is because the worst they can do is write you a major corrective action or nonconformity, right? Major corrective actions, nonconformity, assuming it's not your fifth one, uh, give you three months to sort out what the necessity of that request might have been. Uh, it may be, you know, like in our case, when the heat of the audit is cooled, the CDB realized that was an unnecessary step by the auditor. Uh, the car gets rescinded. Uh, or, you know, in our case, we headed it off before the car was even written. Uh, or you may realize even after, you know, after a greater explanation and conversation that the request is actually something you're fine with. Uh, and you just, you know, didn't understand it clearly during the time. And, and that's fine, too. You know, uh, but either way, uh, feel free to say no, take the corrective action and uh, deal with it later. Uh, you know, my caveat to that, of course, would be just not too much later. Three months does come faster uh, than you think, uh, but not everything needs to be tackled on the day of the audit. So the bottom line is, uh, the fact is, is if you're a U.S. company and you're acting legally already, you meet the core labor requirements. So it's just a question of whether you're going to struggle to show that in your audit or not. All right. Let me take a moment, talk about what American Green offers, uh, and then we'll finish up with a description of the tools you'll need uh, if you decide to go it alone, uh, because, uh, you know, this is a, a, a free webinar. American Green has services that can meet the needs of any company of any size. Uh, when you're a company doing less than $5 million in gross annual wood product sales, uh, we would look to join you to one of our print paper wood group certificates. Multi-billion dollar company who needs a full site, uh, a full service multi-site management plan, we can do that. Uh, and anyone in between, we can assist as well. Uh, in addition to our group and multi-site management services, we also have our online chain of custody portal and our certification kits. So whether answering a few simple questions through our portal or filling in a few blanks in one of our documentation kits, we have an affordable and well-supported do-it-yourself option uh, for any certificate holder. And every single one of these services has what you need to address the new core labor requirements that we're talking about today. And it's all covered by American Green Guarantee. We also support PESC and SFI uh, chain of custody too, just as an aside. Uh, before we move on to the four key components of your core labor updates, I would like to call very special attention to our chain of custody portal. Uh, for those companies in between the small and very large using the transfer system, our brand new one-stop chain of custody portal lets you build audit compliant documentation on your own timeframe. Pay with a credit card, answer some questions, watch some short videos and download your PDFs for the auditor. Anytime you want, stop and start when you want. 3 a.m. on a Sunday night for your Monday morning audit if you want. I do not recommend that as a side note. Uh, I will probably get in trouble if I ever put this in writing but I do like to call our COC portal the TurboTax of certification. Uh, it's something we're very proud of and I'm excited to share. So uh, I'll, uh, Jess, if you'll put a link to, uh, to that in chat just so folks can see it. Thank you. All right. Brief commercial interlude aside, let's get into the nuts and bolts of uh, what you need to build a cork labor compliance COC system. 
It's actually very straightforward, honestly. Uh, first, you need to add language to your operations manual, document control system, standard operating procedures, whatever, whatever you call it, the documentation that describes your FSC system, you need to make sure that you've added a section for core labor. In that section, you need to say who's in charge of core labor. That calls back to that responsible person table I suggested earlier. Uh, how often they're going to be reviewing your system, minimally annually, uh, and what they're reviewing. Are they reviewing your policy statement? Are they reviewing, uh, you know, issues through HR? You know, whatever it might be, uh, you know, just define what they're reviewing. At minimum, it should be the policy statement, core labor assessment. Second, complete that FSC US developed core labor assessment. Uh, we'll put a link in the chat for that as well. And uh, honestly, I think FSC US has done a very good job. Uh, better than uh, many instances over the years. Uh, I think they've done a really good job supporting stakeholders, supporting certificate holders, sorry, uh, in this new requirement. The self-assessment for U.S. companies is simple, it's straightforward, and it's quick. It's a few pages. You go through, you check the boxes, you make sure you understand what is being said in there, but it is functionally following U.S. law. Uh, so, uh, you know, just make sure you have it done and ready to provide your auditor. Third, uh, create a policy statement about core labor and make it available to stakeholders. Uh, in many cases, in most cases, the stakeholders are simply your employees. So uh, there is no specific way you have to make it available to them. Uh, company bulletin board, email, available on intraweb, you know. However, you usually notify employees of things, this can fit right into that. Uh, and in most cases, you actually have all of the necessary components of the policy statement in some form. Uh, whether it's hiring documentation, job postings, employee manuals, etc., uh, there is no requirement for an explicit FSC statement. So you are welcome to cobble together the required parts of the policy statement from multiple different sources, whether they exist or you're creating them. And lastly, and I think this is the biggest one, uh, you know, is have someone from human resources available for an interview. You know, this goes right back to uh, what I started out with in terms of talking about, you know, only doing what you're comfortable having the auditor doing. Having someone there who is versed in HR language will benefit you. Uh, so the auditor may just want to know that someone in HR knows what an I-9 form is. Uh, maybe he or she will want to see where I-9s are stored, or maybe they will actually want to see an example of a filled out I-9. Uh, if you don't want to show them a, uh, actual employer records, don't show them actual employer records. Tell them, you know, this is our system and uh, let them write their report from there. That's okay. Uh, but having someone available who's versed in the language of HR uh, is very beneficial. Do not go it alone as an FSC primary contact. And that's it. These four simple items are going to go a long way to reducing the stress of the core labor portion of your audit. Just a small amount of preparation is going to smooth things over uh, and will definitely pay dividends for you. All right, that seemed like it was going to have to be very uh, uh, longer, but it wasn't. So, uh, we'll answer questions that have come up in the Q&A box. Uh, give Jess and I just a moment to bring them up and sort through them. Feel free to refill your water glass and we'll, uh, we'll get started in just a second. Uh, just a note, because I don't know how many are in there right now. Uh, we will answer all the questions sent to us. Even if it doesn't get answered live, I will make sure you get an email response after we conclude. So I'm going to go on mute for a hot second. We'll be right back.
All right, I am back. Uh, minimal questions were there. Uh, so I'm gonna answer just one question and then uh, if anybody would like or prefer to raise their hand and uh, post a question live, uh, then you know we can handle that as well. But uh, the first question uh, was just a fellow who uh, uh, missed the first couple minutes. And so the topic of the webinar uh, are the Forest Stewardship Council uh, requirements around core labor and the chain of custody standard, the new uh, section seven of 40-004 uh, version 3-1. Or just a moment longer and see if anything else comes through or if anybody raises their hand. Uh, I also can make myself available. Uh, I've got the next little bit here after the webinar clear. So if uh, somebody has questions and wants to email me directly, Chris, C-H-R-I-S at AmericanGreenConsulting.com. Uh, or you can call us at the number on the uh, screen. Uh, I'm extension one. All right, looks like another one came in. Uh, yes, all right, another uh, reasonable question. All right, did you say that you need to do the core labor self-assessment and add that to your COC procedures? Uh, I am confused as to what we are adding to our documentation to prove compliance. Very good. Uh, so, the core labor self-assessment does need to be completed. It does not need to be added to your procedures. I personally uh, think of that as a secondary document. Uh, now, there's no reason you can't add it to your procedures. And, and uh, there are a number of companies who build all of their FSC documentation, whether it's supplier lists, product group lists, et cetera, all into one giant document. I personally am not a fan of that. Uh, so the FSC US uh, self-assessment, and again, make sure you get that link uh, from chat, uh, is, a stand, is built as a standalone document. So uh, in, in the systems that I build for people and my team builds for people, uh, we have an operations manual, and that operations manual is going to uh, have that information I spoke about in terms of who's overseeing core labor, what they're overseeing, and how often they're reviewing it. That goes directly into your procedures. But the self-assessment itself can be a separate document. The policy uh, statement itself should be a separate document. All right, I will give just a couple more minutes in case folks are uh, still typing, and then we'll stick to our, our half an hour.
Okay. I don't see much more coming in. Uh, ubiquitous three little dots aren't appearing anywhere on my screen anymore. So I think I would uh, like to thank you all for coming. Uh, I sincerely appreciate you being here. Going through this first one with us, we're going to be doing a different topic every month, give or take. Uh, and uh, this webinar will be posted on our website. Uh, we can put that. Just just dropped our website in chat. Uh, and you'll be able to find it, I believe, through our blog post as well. Uh, Kendra, who's on the call with us, uh, handles our marketing efforts. And she'll make sure that gets up. We'll have it up for a minimum of a month for folks to access. And, uh, and that's it. I would say uh, since American Green specializes in reducing your COC pressures, I, uh, I won't pressure you to have a good day. I'll just tell you all to have the day you have. And uh, I do hope it's a good one though. Thank you all for coming.